Nu tātad, mīļa draugi, mums My ir atkal vēl vienu svētdienu. We were given another Sunday. Un man tā, ka... And I must tell you, ka kaut kā manā, manā tā, tā rezonants no iepriekšā svētdienas vēl aizvien skanu un rezonē man viesli uz vārdu. It still something resonates in my soul Kur from the last dead. Sunday. Un, uh, it's, uh, the, the word God gave lietām, to us still resonates in me. So we were speaking about revelation of Jesus. Ir, we spoke uh, about... Uh, nu, redz, uh, um, par to, kas... Uh, <laughs> par to, kas... Uh, for what is important to Jesus, there are things which he loves and, and he hates. And also, we first of all talked about personal relationship with Lord Jesus Christ, that this personal relationship is important, that our striving, our works and duties cannot replace it. And then also we were talking that we are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, we are not ashamed of Christ. And I believe that in your soul, it also resonated that it should be like that, that we, we shouldn't be ashamed, we can't be ashamed, we have made a choice and we are together with him. And I want to remind the scripture once more, Revelation 1, because I feel like that, that, that in those words there is um, such an energy included that, um, that it's a no, not enough with one time, at least for myself. And I will remind it in a moment, but now I want to tell you one uh, case, what uh, happened with one lawyer, a lawyer who had studied uh, for a long time and he had uh, had apprenticeship and now he has built his career, uh, was working in a very, very nice, posh uh, lawyer's office, uh, earned good money, drove a good car and wore a nice suit. And, uh, and on his business, he had to go to the Latgal region and go through no, some small villages and as usually he was wearing his nice suit and tie and, uh, and, uh, and driving his nice car and uh, there are less cars uh, on the road because in quarantine and he drives through a small village he three sees there are only three cars in this village no traffic lights nothing some uh, road signs or something and, and he has to come out to the main road uh, from, he has to yield actually, and he didn't uh, press on brakes and just uh, without stopping and he drove. And there was a policeman and stops him pulls him uh, aside, and, and the simple policeman says, give your driver's license because you violated, you breached the rules and we have to write a protocol. And all this uh, way how this uh, policeman spoke and how he looked like, um, the lawyer made lawyer to smile and, and he was like, why did you stop me? You, he was like uh, the per person from Riga, from the capital, he is so... Um, over this man and, and he's like why did you stop me and this Latgalian guy says yeah but there was the main road you had to stop and uh, but the lawyer said but did you notice that I somehow dropped my speed it's almost stopping so and this, um, for a moment, this simple policeman kind of con was confused, but he said, yeah, but you had to stop entirely, not just to, to reduce your speed, and you will have to pay a fine. Okay, and this discussion was quite a long, and this lawyer uh, was kind of talking, uh, he was unshaked, and he said, I reduced my speed, and in legal terminology, terminology it's the same as stopping. So if you can prove that reducing speed is not the same as stopping, then I will give you my documents and you can write a document. And the policeman said, yes, please come out of the car. And the lawyer steps out of the car. No. No. So, and the policeman just uh, takes out his uh, um, uh, stick he's having and, and, and starts beating the lawyer and says, do you want me to stop or to reduce the speed? And the lawyer had his ideas about things, but they did not correspond with the law. So I want to say that each of us, we have 
our assumptions, our uh, thoughts, and maybe wise teachers have placed them in our heads or souls, but not always those uh, uh, ideas are true, but the Bible is the truth. And sometimes I conclude in my life that sometimes I need some time to adapt this truth in my soul and to really understand that the, the real truth does not uh, comply or correspond with what you thought. So once more, Revelation 1.8, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty, the Lord Jesus. So he says, I am the Alpha, the first letter of Greek alphabet. And he is not saying, I'm going to be, he is saying, I am. So it means the first and the the last letter of the Greek alphabet. And with that, he wants to tell us that everything you have is from me. Everything you are comes from me. And generally, you are me. I have placed it in you. I have placed it in you. And so when we are a little bit trembling, can I entrust something which is so precious to me, my career, my life, my little talent? Then we are missing actually that in, in, in general, like in Acts, I don't remember in which, uh, who said it. He is the one who gives life and breath and everything. Life and breath and everything. Everything we have comes from Jesus. And you know, trusting Him is the wisest, the best thing you can do. It's the simplest thing. And also there is an next verse I wanted to speak about, and this is verse 18. I wanted to highlight for you once more because it resonates in my soul and I'm thinking about it and thinking about it. And I also want you to think about it a little bit about this. And so Revelation 1, 17, 18, he says, I will start, um, how John fell at his feet as dead, but he laid his right hand on me, saying into me, to me, do not be afraid. And I have a little bit modified, I have modified according to the King James translation, because our translation in Latvian, somehow I don't know why, why the, our translator had to make it like a poetry, but uh, I, I, more, I trust more the King James translation. Um, it is almost the same, but there was no new Nuances. So it is said, I am the first and the last. I am he who lives, the one who lives, and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. We have to remember that John at that time was an old man. He came for, from a rich family. His family was the one. He arranged that, uh, that Peter also was able to enter the Pilate's uh, palace. Uh, into the belongings uh, or own, uh, what owns the uh, uh, emperor. And uh, John was the richest of all the disciples, and he had given away all his life to Jesus, his Savior. And he is the one who is writing. He is saying, I was the disciple Jesus loved. And I, I think that somewhere in his heart, uh, uh, maybe each of the disciples would say, the same, that I am the, the disciple Jesus loved. Maybe Peter said, I am the disciple Jesus three times asked, do you love me? It was so important for Jesus that I love him. So this is the same John. Here he is already uh, quite in old age. And Jesus speaks to him and says, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I, I've been thinking about this sentence for weeks. The first and the last. I am the first and the last. And I was kind of feeling that I don't understand it. What did he want to tell me? What should I, what should resonate in my soul? when I think about it, that he is the first and the last. 
And you know, for the moment I had some associations, like, um, for example, let's assume that you are on an inhabited island. There is nothing. And the, there is the first and the last journey to this island. Would, would it be difficult for you to wait? For example, they said that this, during this year, there is going to be the first and the last uh, trip from this island, the last chance for, the only chance for you to get away from this island. So, would you walk uh, on this island and make a map or something? No, you would be sitting at that place. I would be sitting at this place. And I wouldn't uh, feel that a year is something long. If it was the only chance, the only chance to get out of the prison, prison the only chance to get, he get a healing from incurable, um, severe, terrible illness or a terrible destiny, the first and the last, but you know, he is the first and last offer of love from God, first and all the last uh, chance for you to become righteous, the first and the last Savior. There is no other. Today, today let us um, uh, make a survey. Let us organize a competition. And, and then we are all not so serious. But if it's the first and the last, there is no replacement, no, no alternative, nothing else. No, you cannot expect anything else. Jesus is the first and the only one. And therefore, you treat him seriously, you don't flirt, you don't make fun, you don't play with it. We understand for God it cost an enormous high price to save you and me. He needed to, to give away his son. His son suffered what we cannot uh, understand. Isaiah writes, who can understand, who understood what happened here? What was going on? He says, nobody, even those who were next to him, they didn't understand how deep was the suffering and how terrible was this uh, sacrifice. And he had to do it. And when we come to him with kind of uh, unwillingness, kind of uh, beside many other things, okay, I can come here, maybe I will take into the consideration, maybe not. If we do like that, we are totally foolish because he is the first and the last. And when Jesus, Jesus says, I am the door to the Father and nobody can get to the Father unless through me. And when this door closes, there will be no other door anytime. These are the last doors. So my dear friend, maybe today when you're listening to me, you are like, oh, you Christians, you are just uh, all the time warning us and blah, blah, blah. And you've done so many bad things as Christians. I am uh, almost 60. Uh, I, am, I cannot take blame on me for all the collisions in the world that people have done. But I want to tell you, Jesus is not to blame for this. I am not to blame for this. And, but Jesus was the, the chance for your salvation, the first and the last chance. And there has not been any else and will not be. And then he also says that I am the one who is alive. He says, I was dead. He was dead in, for you and me. And now he says, I am alive forever and ever. And I have the keys. J John had trusted him. And John says the same as we say. We are in Christ Jesus and there is no condemnation for me. So he says to John, yes, John, you have given away your life to the only right Savior, and now you will live together with me forever and ever. You forever and ever will be saved. You are in a safe place forever and ever. And John 
It, it was an encouragement for John. He needed to raise his head and say, Oh, glory to Jesus. I have responded to the only one Savior. And now my destiny is uh, sold forever and ever. And then also Jesus says, I have the keys of Hades and of death. So it means, keys means uh, authority and power. So it means when you and me close your eyes for the last time, at the at other time, there is no chaos, anarchy, or uh, somebody is going to run, do something. There is authority, and authority belongs to Jesus Christ, and not to anyone else. There isn't a larger power. And if He is your Lord, if you are with Him, if you have entrusted your life to Him, you don't have any fear, fear of death or Hades or something else. Because his elbow is strong enough to take you through everything, whatever happens wherever you are. And therefore is uh, Psalm 136 uh, written in Jesus' name. So therefore, my dear friend, we have a chance, you and me, we can look at our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, and don't look at him, uh, or don't read about him like a book of comics or a TV, TV series of relationships where something is uh, showcased uh, something like real or not real, but uh, here it's written for us, so we learn from Jesus, follow his footsteps and do what he has done. Because remember, Jesus Christ is a perfect theology, and this is what you have to tell to your neighbor, the one who is sitting next to you, or write in your comments, Jesus Christ is the perfect theology. So, when you read the Bible, and if you don't understand how something works, see how Jesus Christ did it, and then you can repeat it. And this is proved, it is written and proved uh, in reality that it works. So therefore now, we will open Matthew chapter 3. And I want to say that Jesus was in quite a similar situation uh, how we uh, are, you and me. This is a time of quarantine, this is a time of limitations, you are not allowed to do something, and, uh, and for somebody it is, um, it is very hard, uh, it impacts you financially or dramatically, or uh, somebody feels it, somebody doesn't. So let us see how it works with Jesus Christ. So, Matthew chapter 3, verse uh, 16, 17, was written that Jesus came to John to the river Jordan. And if you read a little bit before, you see that all Jerusalem and all Judea went uh, to be baptized by John. And Pharisees went and priests went to John to be baptized. And, and, and John spoke to them and said, So, Brood of vipers, who warns you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore, bear fruit, uh, fruit uh, worthy of repentance. And there was a large, large uh, crowd of people. And among others, Jesus also comes. And remember, uh, John the Baptist and Jesus, they were like cousins. They were relatives. And John the Baptist were six months uh, older. And Elizabeth, who was the mother uh, of John the Baptist, had told about Mary. And uh, the Holy Spirit came over me and I was prophesying, I don't understand. Uh, and, and, and I was prophesying, how is it that the mother of my Lord comes to me and John the Baptist was already jumping in, in, the, in her womb and uh, he recognized Messiah because he was filled with the Holy Spirit and uh, they had spoken and now he sees his cousin. His cousin, his mother uh, kept t talking about that this is uh, Messiah, the one who have come and Among other, in front of other people, John says, uh, actually, uh, you would need to baptize me. But Jesus says, um, no, 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 we need to fulfill all righteousness. And then he allowed him, and then Jesus steps in the water, and John the Baptist baptizes him, and, and Jesus comes out of the water, 
And no, remember, there were people apkārt, around. Tauta. There is a crowd. Oh, Jānis Kristītājs, and John the Baptist suddenly, you know, he was given a promise that you will, see, you will see the Spirit come on. And the one on whom the Spirit will come, he will baptize with water and fire. With fire. And you have come to prepare the way for him. And suddenly Jesus, uh, no, John is looking at Jesus and suddenly the Holy Spirit is coming. Remember? This is what uh, John was told. And he sees, this is the one. And the Holy Spirit is coming on Jesus. And John has wide eyes and he's looking and he's kind of saying to his disciples, look, 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 everybody is quiet, everybody, thousands are just looking. And then they are seeing how Jesus comes out of the water and the Holy Spirit comes on him. And suddenly, the heaven was opened to him, and there was a voice, voice came from heaven, and this voice is not like, this is my son. You know, in the book of Revelation, we read that when Jesus speaks, his voice is like an Niagara Falls, and suddenly from heaven, the voice came from heaven, and he says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Wow. Each pastor would like to have this kind of experience. You come to your church and people are around and doing their things, minding their own business, somebody looking for best seats, and then suddenly the heaven opens. And the Holy Spirit comes and God says, this is my pastor, listen to him. Wow, whole church would be in reverence and respect. Oh, our Johnny, Peter, Vilnius, who could know, who, who could have known it? And it resonates in all the nation. Everybody was looking, oh, Jesus, Jesus, this is a new, new teacher. This is a new teacher. This is a new rabbi. This is a special one. The, the John said that uh, he is he. Yes, you and Jesus was feeling great. He had, he had come here and Father publicly proclaimed that He is His Son. Wow. It helped His ministry, yes, of course. A favorable ground for everything. Helped John to prepare obedient hearts so Jesus could speak uh, to people, yes, of course. Work of God was going into the right direction. Everything was fine. Was Jesus feeling great? And somebody would say, oh, Jesus didn't care. I, I don't think he didn't care. He was pleased. I don't know what about feelings. But he felt his father's support and the Holy Spirit is with him. Everything is going to be good. He has to go and minister. And you know, this chapter ends with this verse, verse. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And next verse in chapter 4. And, and we know that this uh, dividing into chapters came later. At first, when Gospels were written, they were not divided. And uh, the, ones, uh, the one who divided into chapters thought that a totally new idea came, and he divided. But actually, it was the next step. And what is the next step? Chapter 4. Everything starts with... Um, Let's read together verse 1. So, Matthew 4, 1. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Oh, um, we, we are reading about somebody to whom, um, about whom the God just said that he is his son and the Holy Spirit in a visible way come over. Not like with you that we received it in faith and our speaking in tongues was so we were not unsure, but the Holy Spirit in a visible way came in a, in a thunderly voice God said, this is my son, everybody saw it. And this son of God goes into the wilderness, 40 days and 40 nights uh, fasted, and then 
Es neizlasīšu šas mirklīt uz mirkli iedomošos, kā mēs ar tevi domājam. I'm just gonna imagine how it means, what it means. Fasting, you fast 40 days and 40 nights. And then, and his face started shining. He wanted to sing uh, songs of praise. He was singing songs of praise. And it seemed that the trees and birds are singing along. And uh, the glory of God came uh, when he was uh, fasting 40 days and 40 nights. Each of us, we have fasted a little bit. And when you are in a good condition, uh, every 15 minutes you want to drink a tea. You drink tea with sugar and honey and uh, and jam or a, a little bit also you drink some kind of uh, something um, stronger like a soup and, and then we feel like that it is so hard to fast you feel like that you are hurt after one day but if you had fasted 40 days and 40 nights in the desert where there are minus degrees at night below zero at night and plus 40 Celsius uh, during the day uh, I was reading that at night it is really really below zero everything freezes and it's not a nice place where everything is nice and warm but this is a most cruel place where you could find yourself and this is a worst place where to fast actually and God just had said this is my son and then the spirit came over him and thousands saw that he was uh, chosen by God and he after 40 days he wanted to eat it's so banal, so simple need, such a need to eat. He was so, so freezing in such a difficult situation. He was sweating and fighting. He was there. And the only he wanted was to eat. When I was fasting uh, my last time for 40 days, when did I fast? That's a good question. Have I done it? I think I wouldn't survive till the 20th day especially if I was in a desert. So after 40 days, when you feel like that you don't understand anything anymore, that you are almost uh, half dead, then temptation comes. Temptations never come when you are ready and you say, okay, hallelujah, Jesus is Lord. I'm going to die for him and go in prison, whatever. No, temptations come when you are the least prepared. And see, you are so difficult situation. And who is the closest? Lucifer, the killer, the liar, the largest liar in the world, the destroyer of personality. And speaks to him, if you are the son of God, hey, you are son of God? If you are son, the son of God, at least to eat. You, you, you can make something for yourself to eat. If you are the son of God, he didn't say that uh, if you are the son of God, uh, let thousands receive healing, no, no more wars, no more bloodshed. But he said, if you are the son of God, maybe you can do this little thing, maybe you can uh, get the bread out of something. That was such a heat uh, under your waistline. It was so dishonest. Uh, it was so cruel. And I, I, I think that Jesus really wanted to feel those emotions. He was feeling on the at the River Jordan where God publicly spoke to him. And here he also would need something. But he answered and said, he says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Man shall not live by bread alone. He lives by every word which comes from the mouth of God. So, my friends, 
do we have such a such an understanding don't we first of all take a medicine against headaches and then as a last resort we look for something which was written in the bible but a man lives by the word of god maybe there is so little life in you maybe therefore you don't have enough for power and endurance and peace because we have replaced the one who really gives life we have replaced him with a tablet with some kind of oil or with some kind of leaks or some healthy food let us stop to look for our legal arguments which uh, do not work in, in reality let us turn to truth that a human a person man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. I'm not going to read about all the temptations, but verse 5, then the devil took him into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple. I've heard some ideas that it was in spirit, that in spirit he was on this temple, like in a dream, in his imagination that he was on this pinnacle of the temple. But you know, have, have you ever jumped from the roof? Uh, did you hurt yourself? No, usually you somehow fly down. If Jesus was in a dream or in a spirit, if when devil said to fly down, Jesus would fly and no problem. Of course, promises of God worked, but he couldn't do this because he physically was on this roof. And the devil again starts with the same, who are you? And what he promised to you, if you are the son of God, and I'm not talking about the revival, I'm not talking about salvation of people, I'm not talking about destinies of nations, I'm talking about you. Didn't he promise to you that he will give his angels charge over you and that uh, in their hands they shall bear you up uh, lest you dash your foot against the stone? Uh, the devil had uh, changed a little bit the verse uh, 12 of Psalm 91 that uh, lets you dash your foot against the stone. So God will do everything that uh, nothing happens to you. Just jump down. And what is he attacking? He is attacking Jesus' identity. So, are you really the one you consider you are? Uh, what the, and isn't what God promised you, promises he gave to you, do they really work? And see, Lucifer, this fallen angel, this uh, one who rebelled against love. He had power to, to get Jesus on this pinnacle of the church. And Jesus answers to him, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Oh my Lord, Lord. I am imagining myself in those situations. Then I was thinking that Jesus was in the same quarantine as you and me. He didn't have Facebook, he didn't have online services, he didn't have an opportunity to eat, he didn't have an opportunity to strengthen himself, to call somebody, he was alone totally. He was cut away from the whole world and he had only one contact and that was contact uh, as you and me and have, with contact with the Heavenly Father. And he still remained um, reliable. He remained, uh, he trusted his Heavenly Father. He didn't ask Father once more to prove that he is reliable and that he can trust his word. And he trusted the Heavenly Father the same way we should trust Jesus Christ until death. In the Revelation it is written, be uh, trust him till the end, till death, and then I will give you the crown yes, of life. Jesus yeah, trusted so his cool. Father, his Lord. You and me, 
We are in a similar situation. Maybe you also have had moments when you are feeling that you are a child of God, that God speaks his words to you, and uh, this is maybe through a pastor, or you hear it yourself, or you maybe you read the Bible, or maybe in a prayer you feel that God says, you are my son, I am well pleased with you, I will take you through, I will help you in your difficult place, you are not gonna... Um, dash your foot against uh, those who are against you are less and those who are for you are more and the one who is in you is larger and maybe you heard those promises and you were breathing in and out but then you lifted and, and you lifted up your eyes and you praised God and you knew that he is reliable that was the moment at the river of Jordan and then came 40 days in, in the desert maybe it's 80 days in your case maybe 3 months, four months, and Jesus comes to you and says, oh, you are, you think you are son of God, you are blessed, a new creation, so he has promised to you, where is it? You don't even have a bread. And he promised that your foot will not be dashed against the stone. How does it work in your life? In my life, I have had moments when you don't have answers, when you don't have answers. And um, maybe today I am a little bit uh, different. Uh, um, I have the, the word, but um, when I was in those places, I, I missed those promises which are written in your soul, which you've been carrying and carrying, and which have become part of your personality, that you can say that uh, the person lives by the word of God. The, the man lives by the word of God. I'm not gonna tempt God. He has answers. He is never too late. He is God whom I can trust. Whatever I can say about God, He is the God whom I can trust. Whatever happens. Oh. My dear friends, I'm sorry that I'm shouting. Maybe your neighbors are already alarmed. Don't say that it was your pastor who was shouting there, but, but it uh, somehow resonates in my soul so much and it is so precious for me. What, and how, how, what helped Jesus to go through these difficult times? I am sure it was uh, what Jesus said in John 14. John 14, he says, if anyone loves me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Who loves me will keep my words, and my Father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. You know, I am sure what, what Jesus did when he was those 40 days in the wilderness, he wasn't just walking around uh, all the time saying, I have to endure, I have to endure, my stomach rumbles, I have to endure. He was talking to the one he loved. He was talking to his heavenly father. Remember in John, Gospel of John, he says, how father has loved me, I have loved you. Uh, if I'm not wrong, in John, 14, he uh, says, pasals, uh, kungs, the Lord of this world is going to come and he cannot do anything over me, yes. but uh, in for the world to know that Viņš I love the Father, tāv, let's stand tāv, up and let's go. So Father loved him and he loved the Father and they had this secret link, this connection, which also you have. Jesus wants to have you and me have personal relationship with him. And somebody once was saying to me, uh, I kind of am sharing my my love with him and he does not respond. But I had to say, you simply don't have the gadget how to hear, but his love all the time, 24-7, is flowing from his heart to your heart and your heart is feeling it. And if you accept it in uh, love, you would, uh, in faith, you would receive it in your soul. The sun shines over you. Uh, he loves you. Uh, the clouds, the earth keeps uh, going uh, around the sun because he loves you. 
his love has never stopped, it is flowing for to believers, non-believers, young and old, good people and uh, bad people. God is love and it's not going to ever change. He loves all of us. And only some stay, remain in this love and enjoy it and live it through. And this relationship that Jesus loved the Father, give him this power. He stayed with his words. And then he was able to say, it is written so and so. If you and me have this love relationship with Lord Jesus, if you say to him, Lord, I love you and I give thanks for your love, I am enjoying it, I am living in it. Ephesians 3, Paul speaks uh, from verse 17 to 20. So for you to acknowledge and to understand the love of God and understand its depth and width and uh, this love of Father is the one which guides us to fullness. Uh, understanding is good. Knowledge is good. Uh, it, it sparkles and then it fades. But love is which guides us and helps us to move forward. Love is uh, which gives you this connection. Uh, whatever times you are having, uh, loneliness, separation, attacks, uh, temptations, Lucifer is attacking you. But you love Lord Jesus. It is a little bit different for each of us, but it should be like that. It should be your love meeting and encounter with Lord Jesus. And Jesus had it with uh, his father. And the main message I wanted you to see is what that he says. The father would love him. Father would give his love. Father will love him. And we will come uh, to him and make our home with him. So where God lives, in each heart, in each Christian's heart, who has love relationship with his uh, God, uh, who says, Jesus, I love you, and I am holding on to your words, and your words are so important, so precious to me. Jesus, you are my Savior, my Lord. He lives in his, Father lives in his heart. And therefore Jesus was not alone in the wilderness. God was living in his heart together with him. And you know, in your difficulties, you are also not alone. Jesus said, me and Father, we will come to him and make our home with him. I'm going to talk about myself. I'm not always feeling that. Not always feeling that. But there are moments when those feelings just overflow me. I'm saying, God, I cannot bear it. Uh, I cannot uh, proceed it. I cannot uh, uh, manage it. It is so big. It is uh, like a flow. And you enjoy and you are and then you're swimming in this and you're um, jumping and dancing and, and you think if somebody looked at you would think that you are totally nuts. But this is so so amazing to feel it that me and my father we love you and we are going to be with him with uh, you and if God is with you if God Jesus is with you if you are baptized with the Holy Spirit then this time shouldn't be time of perishing this shouldn't be a time which is kind of uh, um, requiem before death it shouldn't be a requiem before your death. Come. It should be something, something like preparation, uh, uh, place of preparation for the victory. And, and I remember when Jesus went into the wilderness, we read in Matthew 4, uh, in Luke uh, chapter 4, we read about Jesus uh, when he returned from the wilderness. So to the wilderness, he was guided by the Spirit, but he came out of the wilderness in the power of the Spirit. So I am sure that you and me from this special situation we can walk out in the power of the Spirit because Jesus is with you. Our Prime Minister once said, all of us we are in, in one boat. 
Why Premier's go cover I don't know, know if he can help if <laughs> he is in your boat, but if in, if it Jesus <laughs> is in your boat, <laughs> yeah, yes, if Jesus <laughs> is <laughs> in your boat, <laughs> and if the Father, <laughs> Father God is in your boat, and whatever <laughs> is <laughs> under <laughs> it, uh, fire or <laughs> water or, <laughs> <so> or <laughs> rocks <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> your boat <laughs> will go <laughs> over everything. <laughs> we have seen <laughs> Daniel <laughs> in <laughs> the pit of <laughs> lions <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Sadrach, <laughs> Mezak, Abednego, <laughs> also is, um, <laughs> Uh, in this fire and, uh, and, uh, and uh, we have seen many things, Elijah who is uh, on a fiery carriage and Moses who is overlooking all the land from the mountain and so on and so forth. So God, everything is possible with God. And let me finish my sermon with Romans 8. This is my favorite chapter. Very often I spend time reading this and I have taken several verses and I want to read for you some verses because they speak so powerfully and I hope it will speak to you as well. So Romans 8, 28, we are the ones who love Jesus. We have a personal love relationship with Jesus. And what is he saying? And we know, it is known to everyone, that uh, all things work together together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew, he has foreknew you and me. He also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. So why we can learn from Jesus? Because we are made uh, similar to, his, to him, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, from whom he predestined, those he also called, from he, whom he called, these he also justified, and whom he justified, these he also glorified. What yeah, shall we say to those things? If yeah, God Dios is for us, if God is for us, who can be against us? He didn't spare his own son, but deliver, delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who so, shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and further more also reason who is even at the right hand of God who also makes intercession for us who shall separate us from the love of Christ shall tribulation or distress persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written so it means that such situations are possible suffering fear famine nakedness peril or sword who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long, we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Verse 37, yet, yet, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. See what Jesus wants to place in your and my heart. He wants to place in your and my heart this understanding. The safety that if you have personal relationship with your Lord Jesus and if you have it personal relationship with Lord Jesus Christ, you will keep his words. Remember, I like the psalm that because he is so strongly attached to me, I will save him. And also Sadrach Mezak and Abednego, um, they knew that God doesn't want them to do something. They said, I would never do it. And uh, they knew that God wanted them to do something and they did it. And so God said, he is so close to me. He loves me so much. I will save him. If you love Jesus, if 
it is important, uh, you important it's important for you it's important what is for important for him if you hate what he hates if you try to get what he has uh, he is with you and you will go through in a victory this is a special time a special time in which like James says keep it as a great joy that you fall in various temptations knowing that temptations change something in you and that you get endurance and endurance uh, can be seen in activity and that then he says that you will become you will become perfect this is becoming what happened to Jesus and this also happens to you and me if we don't give up if we don't uh, become idle and just exist what is happening no happening is that you love God he is the first and the last ever all keys are in his hands and the, the most correct thing you can do is to trust him love him that he lives with you and you will go through everything in a victory you will go through in a victory you will go out in a victory you will go out in a victory, in a victory. And there is no chance to be in any different way this is what i wanted to give to you god placed it in my heart he is alpha and omega Viņš ir pirmais he un is pēdējais, the first and the last and the only. Viņš ir sākums he un is the beginning and the end. Viņš ir tas, kurš bija mirs he is the one who was dead in, for you. Un and he is not going to die. And you ja are not going to die yes, anymore. If you have ja accepted Jesus as your Lord, if he is the center of your life, if he is your greatest passion and love, if you trust him, you are going to go through whatever happens in the world. And you look around and you don't know what's going on there or there, but you know what's happening with you, that the real relationship with God is in you and God acts in your life and he's operating in your life and you go through everything in the name of Jesus.